Hello and welcome to Off Planet TV. I'm Randy Moggins. We are here in the uh, large video studio of Off Planet TV today, and we're going to talk with my friend and guest, Duncan O'Finian, who is uh, here with us in studio. We're going to discuss uh, some of the events that are upcoming. We're going to catch up with what Duncan has been up to, and we're going to discuss um, signs and wonders in the sky that are sort of portents for the next six months. We're going to discuss uh, certain key missions that are upcoming for Duncan as well. And we are going to look at some of the tools used in the field. We're going to do all of that in this segment. <laughs> a lot of traveling, huh? It's been, yeah, a lot of traveling the past uh, three months. Yeah, three months. Almost, yeah, three months solid from state to state, place to place. Um, crazy weather, crazy times, crazy people, and crazy minds. So, <laughs> so you have uh, your staff there. Let's talk a little bit about this Go because ahead, this is actually one of your okay. tools. Yeah, that you're using. Well, the stand, it, it is exactly that. It it's like a wand. It's like crystals. It's like runes. It's a tool. Is what it is. The problem was it's not necessarily a problem, but in some cases with staffs, wands, and a couple of other tools, they can take on a personality of their own, and and the strictest sense becomes sentient of their own they become embodied with part of your spirit uh part of earth part of the element that you're attached to uh people that you're close to they become conscious with all those different energies and those different spirits combined into one uh this staff is for all practical purposes alive it um, bends and straightens on its own it vibrates on its own it smokes on its own and gets hot uh, if it breaks into the wine cellar we got a problem but <laughs> right now we're good <laughs> um, it's just one of those things that when you use something enough and it becomes so familiar it's like your car you'll be able to start your car when nobody else will nobody else can you become part of the machine. So this basically has your own energetic pattern programmed into it. Right. And you are the person who initiates what this does. Right. Flip that down a little bit and show the top of the staff. Okay. And uh, explain a little bit about how you have this constructed from the top. Okay. There's a hole here in, in, in the top, and there's also a hole in the bottom. There is a rather large crystal in the tip, and I have it sealed off just enough to hold it inside, but the crystal stays ex exposed. Um, the copper ring on the top, I made, I hammered out. Uh, it's twofold. It um, helps with uh, the drawing of energy and also of uh, the p pushing everything out through the top. And it covers up the hole I made in it when I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> um, from there down, it's just uh, carved and burnt in runes, other symbols that uh, mean more to me. 
things that I use. Um, so these runes, they're like, they're like sigils, are they power symbols? Are they, they are. part of, explain a little bit about... Some are power symbols, uh, some are protection symbols, uh, some are, as an example here, are my own symbols. They're my own personal symbols. That you've created. Correct. Um, there are some alchemy symbols, like this is the one that we used yesterday, the uh, symbol for the Red King, which when you use, burn something inside it, burns incredibly hot. <laughs> uh, all four elements are represented. Um, the arrows are, are guides to pull everything into line to run it right up the top. Now at the top of that, I don't know if we mentioned it, that's brat or copper at the top of that. And this creates a, a very interesting, I guess, electrical field within the staff right. itself. Right. It will bring everything up, create a static ring here. And then it will just, as you see it, it I have a spiral up the top. And it literally just goes from here out to tip. And the crystal expands, expands it. Now, bring it up and let's take it down to the base of the staff turn it upside down and you can explain this because this helps to explain how uh, it this functions is, as well this is a convoluted mess <laughs> but it works there's a hole drilled in the base to about about here there's a rather huge crystal in the base uh, there are 24 magnets inside the, the copper wrapping uh, they're drilled small holes are drilled here all 12 on each on each side double magnets in each hole that are opposing each other uh, the base crystal has copper wire wrapped around it wire comes up on each side covering the magnets wrapping around the top back down forming an electromagnetic circuit and the copper here, every time it's stamped, it creates a static charge that comes all the way up. It also, if it's light, if there's lightning outside, it will shake. Um, and it, it just, the lever is a conductive of electric current. Now, as you can see, that's a piece of the wire trying to work its way through. More repairs are in order. There, these things are you're never done. When you make one, it's never, never finished. You're always either doing repairs. High maintenance. They are high maintenance. You're constantly redoing symbols, sanding, reburning, recarving, redoing wrapping. Yes, they're constantly having to, to do something to them. Now the runes here are burned in, but. You're also using something when you're burning these in. Explain a little bit about that. On a lot of these, as an example here, uh, some of the smaller ones were too small to do. Uh, here is a good example. They're burned in, and then uh, dragon blood resin, uh, ground up to a powder, is put inside the burns. And I actually took a Dremel tool to some of these and cut it in fairly deep. And then a wood burning tool is put in to melt the resin. So these have uh, solid dragon's blood inside, especially uh, the Elven symbols, the infinity symbols, uh, the four elements. Oops. Uh, here, these three, these were magnets at one time. And every time I would charge it, these magnets would literally jump out. I got tired of putting them. I got tired of trying to put them back in, so I just took them out permanently and filled them full of dragon's blood. Some of them are too small to do much with. Like it, it was difficult enough to burn it in mm -hmm. the way it was, so just kind of had to leave leave it at that. But it's a, it's a tool. It's part of me, and it's part of her. She can, you know, Susan can use this just as easily as I can. Her essence is in it, the same as mine, and. It's um, it's like a friend. It becomes a so friend. So what would be one 
way in which you would use this uh, hypothetically? Uh, summoning. If you want to summon the spirits, you, there's a way to do that. Uh, it is a power tool. Hold it in front of you to hold things back. It's uh, like an alarm. If something really bad is close to us at night, you will it will wake us up. You'll smell it burning. Mm -hmm. You'll smell everything getting hot. Uh, first time it happened, I thought the house was on fire. <laughs> but it's just the staff. Um, it's not like Lord of the Rings or Gandalf staff you used it to fight with as well. It's not made for that. This is a uh, pure energy staff, uh, pure, pure magical, not for physical fighting. And it's, it's one of its primary sources is to draw up energy. And then one, the staff charges with the left hand you can pull into you and then push it in to what you need it to. And with each individual symbol, such as the Red King, the arrows, the elements. Put it a little closer this way, so yeah. Myrmenor, uh, my own personal ones. You can use each of these separately and individually. You can, you know, like we did yesterday. We were figuring out what to do. Mm -hmm. look, check the right, staff. Yeah. Okay, we'll use this one. Yeah, we, we won't talk about what we no. did yesterday, except <laughs> to say that we did a little bit of, uh, well, the magic that is uh, part of what uh, Duncan and Susan are doing right now. Let's move on to another subject, um, <clears throat> and that would be the ring around the sun and mm. the timing of some pretty key events. We've talked about this in the past. You talked about it on my show probably a couple years ago, maybe even longer. I think it was a little longer than that, yeah. Um, but that there would be a sign and what that sign would be and what it would mean in terms of, of timing. And um, you sent me a text message, I think maybe about five, six weeks ago, mm -hmm. telling me so, telling me then that we were in a six month the window. six month countdown had yeah. begun. Okay, so explain a little bit about what, what that was, what happened and what it means. That was uh, the night of the Stanley Cup finals. Um, and I was flipping around and I found the rings, the, the circles that were, have been uh, filmed down in South America and looked at them and my blood went cold. I mean, I was led to go to the laptop. I had no desire to be on a computer, know anything. And I just got up and said, I'll be right back. And that's the first thing I saw when I logged on. And what... I, I had said those months ago is that that was a sign that I was told to watch for. Mm -hmm. And when the ring around the sun was, it, that it would be prominent, that, you know, everybody would, would see. It. Well, I think everybody saw that. Everybody who was looking for anything had, who had their eyes open saw that. Yeah. Uh, there's some people not going to see anything, you know, doesn't matter. But what I was told was to watch for that. When I saw that, that was a six-month countdown. Well, other things are counting down exactly. as well. Yeah. Through late October, early November, the financial markets are counting down. They're going to collapse about that time. There's all these other things. Everything is convalescing into that six-month countdown. And it's all going to hit the fan late October, early November. Yeah, we've had um, the Jade Helm operation. We don't know where that's at, but you and I have suspected that operation may have started as early as middle of April. Yeah. And uh, it was publicly announced to begin the 15th right. of July, which is uh, about seven days away. But I suspect it's already in process in some level or another. Um, along with that, again, the financial system, a lot of people are saying September or October. Right for the takedown of the financial system and um, anything else that we're looking at in terms of, I mean, everything. We've got the Pope coming to the United States, yeah. which is huge. I think the announcement that the Pope makes is going to be earth shattering. I don't know exactly where he's going with this, but it's not going to be good. 
and there's people talking about at the end of the six months countdown where um, Bluebeam will be put into use. I think that's going to have a lot to do with the Pope's announcement. Um, you know, we talked about this so many times. When, yeah. when, when things yeah. start, it's just going to be a, a cascade. It's like turning over dominoes. This is going to hit, this is going to hit, this is going to and on and on and on. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's not going to be enough time to recover from this until something else hits. But going back to, to Jade Helm, we were all over Texas a couple of months ago. We were in Waco when <laughs> the, the biker gang were shoot out. Yeah. shooting it out. We, yeah. were, we were there when this was going on. Uh, we saw virtually no military activity in Texas. Where we saw the military activity was Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. Hundreds of troop carriers going east and north. Going east and east north. And north. Well, we, that's, that's a data point for another conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But we counted, um, at, just in one instance, um, we passed 57 troop carriers. All in one convoy. So I'm assuming that most of what we're seeing in the press, and especially even in the alternative press, is probably misdirects. That they're pointing. Yeah. They're pointing toward Texas, the Midwest, out there when the actual event is going to be out here. Which Texas. makes a lot of sense. Um, as well as that, we've talked about <clears throat> things that could happen with the the, the fault lines in the mm. country, uh, specifically emanating out of the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah which I think the New Madrid Fault, obviously, could be triggered at any time, uh, which creates a whole other scenario as oh, well. All you got to do is go to the earthquake map. I mean, I, I usually check it a few times a day. It drives her nuts. <laughs> but um, just watch, look at the New Madrid. I mean, Oklahoma, Missouri, uh, up into uh, Michigan, is having mm -hmm. quakes now mm -hmm. up into Canada, everything everything that I saw twenty plus years ago, yeah, where it comes straight down, literally splits the country in half, north to south. Yeah, people that want to see that can reference the maps that were put up by Gordon Michael Scallion, yeah. which I still think are well, I th I think they're actually prophetic, if not predictive. I agree, and a good indicator of what we would be looking at. If the New Madrid actually goes full yeah. blown, the Mississippi reverses. We have the Great Lakes emptying down. We basically have an inland ocean at that mm -hmm. point. One of the things about Scallion, I'll say this real quick, that that I know that he, he's legit, is I heard him talk 20, 25 years ago, is that he talks about the physical aftermath and the effects of when he would have a vision. He is dead on right about that. You go down with headaches, the sick stomach, the light sensitivity to the eyes, the, the whole thing. Or sometimes you can't move for hours. And he talked about that. So for me, that gives what he's put out yeah. more credibility than someone who, you know, says, I had a dream, here it is, you know. There's more credibility to there's it. There's more detail. He gave, yeah. There's a lot of granularity in, in that work. And I haven't looked at it for a long time, but I know... About 10 years ago, I was hitting that real heavy. And yeah. so, you know, here again, <clears throat> people can go look at that and decide for themselves. I'm going to go back to the Pope for a minute. Or maybe I should say the Popes. You and I had an interesting conversation about this and something that I had not considered in this equation, which is essentially we at, the, at this present time have two we do. Popes. We do. A Pope can't resign when... The, the cardinal becomes the Bishop of Rome, which is what the Pope is. And he's there for life. He's there until he dies. He cannot resign his post. He can step down from the day-to-day -day activity, but he is still Pope. And for the first time in history, the Catholic Church has two Popes. One in the back, one in the front. And it's like we talked about with uh, St. Malachi's mm. prophecies yep. that the final pope would would be um, 
the name he cho he chooses just totally escapes me. Yeah, it did me too. <laughs> um, Peter the Roman. Peter the Roman. Peter the Roman. Yeah. The present Pope has stated he just doesn't think he will be Pope for very long. Well, if something happens to him, whether he is taken out like John, you know, like the first John Paul, John Paul mm -hmm. one, or whether it's legitimate, he gets sick or whatever, Ratzinger comes back in. Well, the question that I have, and since it's a situation that nobody has dealt with before, does Ratzinger become Benedict again? Or does he take a new name? Oh, that's that's an interesting X factor. Yeah. I say he gets to take a new name. Since he has given up he's given up the papal authorities of day to day. But according to the canon of the Holy See, he is still Pope. He is still El Papa. He is still in charge. This is the guy. This is almost starting to sound like the book of Revelation yeah. and the beast that was and the beast and that shall be. And the beast that shall be. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason Ratzinger was always called the rat. Yeah. Well, he was the inquisitor. Mm hmm. He was called a rat. I read his, his some a lot of his history. He was called the rat from the time he was a kid. He was a scumbag, some bitch is what he was <laughs> from day one. <laughs> so we have that interesting scenario. We know that the Vatican has their Lucifer uh, um, Observatory, the radar telescope at Mount Graham. Yeah. And the word seems to be that they're very aware of things both above the earth and below the earth right now and the forces that are kind of we're we really are in midgard aren't we i mean yeah not just are. dimensionally but even physically yeah. we're on the surface of a planet that has forces above it and forces below right. it in the earth yeah this is uh take the norse lore take everything out of it you know and just look at it in, in scientific terms we are in the middle earth is right in the middle of everything it's a very important place to be right now. Yeah. You know, it's always been an important place. Um, I had a train of thought. Where was I going to go with it? Uh, the observatories. Um, they're watching and waiting for alignments, just like we are. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what has been called through history as the grand alignment. It's everything that lines up toward the galactic center. Um, it's not that everything is in absolute perfect alignment. It doesn't have to be. It just has to be lined up enough for all these different energies to connect to all these celestial bodies. And when they do, that's when CERN gets fired up completely. That's when um, major attacks begin to happen. Financial markets are done. They're gone. Unless certain people right working right now can ch make it work right and mm -hmm. change. I'm trying to be yeah. careful with what I say. I understand. <laughs> um, but that's what they're they're looking for. So in terms of CERN, CERN's still in play. We CERN's are, still in play. This is the um, this is kind of the big portal that has to be um, taken care of. We know that there's portals opened. Um, Robert Stanley recently reported on what he found in terms of the gravity well with that base underwater out in Malibu. Uh -huh. And, you know, they call, they call it an ET base. I don't yeah. know if they're ETs or EDs. I just... ETs are left over from the last go around. You know, a lot of stuff out there is leftover technology from 26,000 years ago or 126,000 years ago. depends on who you talk to. You know, and yeah. what's time? What time got to do with it? Really? That, yeah. I mean, if CERN comes through, there will be no time there no more anyway. No there will be no time. No. No. Um, CERN had, you know, CERN's had its setbacks. Sorry. Uh, it's <laughs> going to continue to have its setbacks up until time to certain people do certain things to it. Uh, but there have been people talking about you know, blowing it up and what? No, <laughs> hell no! You don't want to blow it up. You blow up CERN, you're gonna wipe out half of Europe. You can't blow at it at the very up. least. At the least, I mean, and the, and talking about gravity well, holy crap! The gravity well that 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 portal inside would cause if you blow it up. Uh uh, 
you can't blow it up. It's the last thing you want to do. Implode it, maybe, so that everything collapses in upon in, itself. In itself, yeah. But you don't. You, you you can't blow it up. So, at the present time, you are getting ready to go on a mission, and you're probably not released to say a whole lot about that mission. I'm not going to ask you about no, unfortunately the details. No. Um, I know that you and Susan have been training intensively for what about six to eight weeks yeah. now, and that this next leg of it is all part of a, a, a plan that's kind of being worked together from a lot of different sides. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess what maybe we leave the people with today is that um, despite the darkness of some of the things that we're talking about right now, the good news is that there are people in the background who are working mm. for humanity. People uh, in the background working for humanity, humans working for humanity, other beings working for humanity, uh, interdimensional beings. Humanity's got a lot of people fighting for it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the thing that, like Susan and I have talked, we'd like to see more humans fighting for humans than we've got. That's been my recent rant as well, is that people have to get up and do whatever it is they're going to do. It's, it's past time for people to drop the old paradigm. It doesn't work anymore. It never did work. It kept you consciously safe in your own world, in your own bubble for a few generations. But those bubbles are burst now. I mean, all you got to do is just open your eyes, shut your mouth, and go outside and look around. You, As an example, I got an email from a friend of mine mm -hmm. that I work out with occasionally. This guy is so down to earth, so grounded, and Danny, I love you to death, but when it comes to other things, he's just total, doesn't know anything. Okay? They never wanted to know. I understand that. Wrote me and said, what is going on? Everything's going crazy. Even he feels it. So when you have people who know nothing about anything like we talk about, and they're feeling the craziness, they're feeling the energies begin to swirl. It's time. It's time. It's yeah. time. Yeah, there's a lot of people right now that are getting pulled on again uh, for to wake up. They notice things are wrong, and that's the first step. What we have to do is we have to activate and motivate the people who are already awake. And, I mean, look, a lot of us have spent decades researching. Um, and some of us have been preparing for a long time. And all of that's good. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, now something else has to happen. And as, it, as we said earlier... There are a lot of different legs to this initiative that are going there on. There's a lot of different places where people can put their en energy and their time to do something meaningful. And I guess my point in saying that is that people need to figure out what it is they're supposed to yeah. do, however big or however small. Yeah. Everybody has a part to play. It can be even the person who has the smallest part cascades into the person who has the next part. There are no small parts. Everybody's got something to do. Every every actor on this stage, even if it's a one, you have one word to say. If you miss your cue, you mess up the whole play. People don't know the roles yet. So the role is to know the role, to figure out who you are in the clockwork and go yeah. forward. Any last words you want to give people at this time, Duncan, on this interview? Yeah. Um, DNA activation. Um, we talked about this before, and I kind of it was working inside about daylight this morning. Um, everybody has more strands of DNA that are becoming active, so your your DNA is starting to to a degree rewrite itself. Mm -hmm. So when you get up in the mornings and people, if you're feeling like you're shaking from the deep in the core out that's str different strands of dna being activated at, the, at this time so a lot of people are being going through internal changes and so you may 
get up a lot of mornings and really be shaking real bad inside. It's not from a bad dream. It isn't anything like that. It, you're being rewritten inside. As more DNA strands are activated, they have to build that synapsis between mm -hmm. the, the strands. And this is where in all the ancient writings, all the old text, it talks about the men of men, and of course they say men, but men and women of power during the old, the old, the mighty the men ancient of old. days, yeah. the mighty men of old. It's just more DNA activation. I mean, that's where all the people that are we deal with now, as with Asgard, Elven, and whatnot, that's where they came from. Okay. That's so how we're they not became. mere little humans putzing around on this planet. No. We're actually gods in ascension right now. Exactly, we are. That's ascension. Yeah. That's ascension. Yeah. So, so what people can take away from this is, if you're going through these these experiences, pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. um, pay attention to your abilities because out of all of this, we should begin to develop new abilities. They will start to manifest. Abilities will start to manifest. They're uh, dating all the way back to the 60s where they talked about people with latent psychic abilities, people whose abilities did not become manifest until later in life, usually mm -hmm. with trauma. This is internal trauma with, with the DNA activation. It doesn't matter what the age. So any abilities that you have they're going to, are going to become active. And they'll start manifesting. And this is something we've been talking about for years. Yeah, yeah. Well, Absolutely. it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Yeah. Everything we've talked about all these mm -hmm. years, people saying, you guys are nuts, you're crazy. It's happening Well, now. we were talking about certain, what, years ago. Seven years, At eight least years seven ago. Years, seven, eight years ago. And then nobody was connecting CERN with anything except uh, uh, basically... A large hadron collider that yeah. was doing cool scientific experiments. So you were on record back in 2009, 2010, beginning to talk about CERN, and now most of the internet's caught up with yeah. this. They're getting it. Yeah, it's a portal. It is a portal. And here's uh, the thing I meant to mention earlier before we jump off of here. As CERN activates, it's also activating smaller natural portals that are around the world. Uh, those na natural portals, most of them were shut down many, 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 many generations ago. And they were shut down for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody's ever wondered why certain military bases are built in certain places, like why in the hell would you build a base? Because it's where the portal's at. As CERN vibrates, as it vibrates, it's sending out its energy. It's cascading through the planet coming out the other side, going through all the grids, all the ley lines. It's reactivating a lot of those natural portals. Chupacabra ain't got nothing on these things, man, when, he, when these nasties start coming through. <laughs> That's why you're seeing military personnel going out to some really remote places. They're setting up camp. They're waiting. Mm -hmm. They're waiting. They know they're coming. Bigfoot, Sasquatch, they, they'll run and hide from what's coming out of those holes. <laughs> well, uh, any uh, again, any last final follow-up thoughts? Anything from Susan, who is over here in the wings, <laughs> on stage right? <laughs> well, show yourself. Oh, okay. And, uh, there you go. I'm holding. I have a wait. very important job to hold the staff. Yes, it is. Okay. Last words, wake up. Yeah. I like to, uh, the, okay, I know, I do know. Um, Harry Dresden. The blessing he gave to, to um, a couple. Bless you, be good to one another, look out for one another, and don't mess it up. Perfect. And there you have it. That's the final word from Duncan and Susan. This is All Planet TV. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is out there. It's inside you. Namaste.